Hey everyone, welcome to Hustle is for Life Motivation. This is the show where you come to find out how the great thought leaders and experts of the world have created extraordinary results in their life. And what we do is we come here every single week to dissect their lives and their minds so we can learn the exact steps that we need to take to reach the same level. I'm your host Talal and tonight's show is going to be really interesting. We're going to explore some really interesting ideas in this one. I'm really looking forward to this conversation. There's a quote that says that success comes in cans, not can'ts or can't if you're English. <laughs> but it's a really powerful quote and I'd like you to take a minute to just reflect on that. What areas of your life are you saying that you can achieve this? I can be this. I can do this. I can have this. Because I bet you that a lot of the times the thought that enter your head say that you can't. And tonight's guest is going to talk to us a lot about having the courage and having the attitude to go ahead and change your cans into cans. Her name is Lori Kaufman. She is uh, she's amazing. She's she's a lawyer. She's a businesswoman. She has been a businesswoman for over thirty years. She's owned three separate businesses. She's opened four direct sales businesses. Um, she's been a management consultant for growing brands. She is uh, writing her book at the moment, which is really exciting uh, because it's all about franchising. That's what she actually specializes in, in franchising. So I'm really looking forward to that book. She also is an online coach, both in terms of business and lifestyle. And she also has a speaking business where she talks about uh, her own personal story. She likes to share her own personal story as well as talking about franchising. So she has a world of knowledge in from different domains and she brings it together in a very beautiful way. She has an amazing story. So with that, let's welcome Lori to the show. Lori, thanks for being here. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. It's a real pleasure to have you on, Lori. So talk to me a little bit about your journey. Take us back in time and tell us what did it look like when you first started down this road and how did you overcome all the hardships? Because you talk a lot about your own personal story where you went through divorce, you've faced bankruptcy, you've suffered through depression um, and sexual abuse. So talk to us a little bit about that journey, what that looked like, and how did you manage to beat those odds, have the courage and the attitude to turn those I can'ts to I can'ts? Well, I have actually had, as you say, a very long and, and a difficult journey, um, but I've had tremendous success at the same time. Um, as you mentioned, over the course of my life, I've suffered from uh, bankruptcy, divorce, uh, loss of a child, depression, um, and a whole you know whack of other things that I've suffered over the course of my life. And um, what really made a difference for me was that I grew up, I was fortunate, I grew up in a very loving household where my parents always told both my brother and I, uh, you know, you can do anything you want, you can be anything you want to be. And so I got a tremendous amount of love and support and, and that's really, you know, what helped me through some of the difficult times. Um, but in reality, uh, what helped me through is my own determination, you know, my own, um, you know, saying to myself, you know, I can sit here and I can dwell in misery or I can, you know, start making small changes in my life because it's, you know, when you think about it, it's very overwhelming when you think about making a big change. So I started to think about, well, what are the small things I could do that could lead to big changes? And so that's really how I've managed to overcome my difficulty. Awesome. And I think for a lot of people in the audience, they can probably relate to this um, because everybody has gone through a hardship in their life. Everybody's gone through some dark Correct. times in their life. And uh, there, there's, you can sometimes reach a point where the wall just seems to be closing in and you feel stuck, hopeless, there's no light at the end of the tunnel and you feel that everything is just against you. 
And I think over there that your advice on just taking those small taps, those making those small changes that lead to bigger outcomes. I think that's really powerful because a lot of the times what people try to do is that I want to change everything overnight. I want this to be over. How can I get rid of it? And that's not going to happen. No, especially because the situation didn't create itself overnight. So you certainly can't expect to repair it overnight. Yeah. So I, I absolutely love the fact that you shared that, you know, how you can make small changes. Um, and I'm wondering if you, if you wouldn't mind expanding on that to talking about like what small changes did you work with that allowed you to kind of carry on and then have your breakthrough? Well, like they really were, I mean, you know, it started with a major change uh, where I was suffering a major depression. I was, I had been married for 20 years. I was extremely unhappy. Um, my ex-husband was quite abusive and not very much fun. And, um, but I was afraid of him. So I was afraid to leave him. So one day I was sitting on the floor uh, in the bathroom of my home with a bottle of pills and just sitting there and just staring at them. And then I thought to myself, I can't do this. I have two children. You know, what's going to happen to the children if I leave them to him? What's going to happen if I go? Who is going to protect them? And it was like I literally had this aha moment where this light went on and I said, whatever it is, I have to face it. And, um, you know, it was very difficult getting a divorce from my ex, um, but I did manage to do it. It's, you know, one of the better things that I've, I've done for myself. And, um, and instead of being so overwhelmed about, well, I have to move and I have to find a place and I have to find work. What I started doing was, and I, this is something that someone taught me many years ago, and it has stayed with me since. It's, I deal with today's problems today. So when I was thinking about, you know, okay, I have to move and I have to find a place and then I have to get furniture and I'm going to need to get a new car. And he said to me, you don't need a new car for another two months. So that's not today's problem. So we're not dealing with that. Mm. And you don't have your place yet. So we're not dealing with buying furniture yet because you don't have your place yet. So we're not dealing with that. And so the only thing we're dealing with right now then out of all these things is let's find you a place to live. So that's part of breaking things down into small pieces because a divorce and moving out with my children was extremely overwhelming. And so by deciding just to, you know, focus on one thing at a time, do things in order, but I only focus and, and I've lived my life this way for the past 20 years that I focus and I only worry about things that I know I have to worry about. So I don't worry about things that I cannot control. I don't, you know, if I go to the doctor and I get a blood test and he's, you know, whatever he's testing for, some people will come home and they'll be anxious and they'll wait for the phone to ring. And I have decided that I'm not going to live my life that way. So I just, I had my test. There's nothing I can do about it. I have no control over it, and I don't know what the results are going to be. So I'm not going to waste my time worrying that I have some life-threatening disease because that's just sucking up a lot of energy, and it's making it stressful when it's more likely than not that everything is fine. So I don't worry about things that I have no control over. And I think that's something also that has made a big difference um, to people that I've spoken to over the years. That's, that's beautiful, Lori. And for people in the audience, take a pause, grab a piece of paper, grab a pen, and write that down, what Lori said there. I thought that was absolute perfect. That was absolute gold. First of all, the quote, I deal with today's problems today. All right, what are the problems you're facing today? Just deal with them. Don't worry about tomorrow or next week or next month. When tomorrow comes, then that would be your today, and you deal with those problems. When the next month comes, then that would be your today and you deal with those problems. But problems are not fixed things anyway. They usually evolve. So why are you worrying about it today? You don't know what it's going to look like tomorrow or next month. Let's get there. Let's break it down. Yeah. We'll and do that's it. why the, you know, part like to continue on that same thing is there are certain words that you need to take out of your vocabulary. And they're would have, should have, and could have. Hmm. Yeah. Because, you know, you say, well, you know, had I known, I would have done this, but you didn't know and you didn't do that, you know, or I could have done this well, but you didn't. 
you know, or I shouldn't have done this. Okay, but you did. So just deal with the reality. And when you're talking about what I could have, should I, you're just fantasizing. And, you know, not necess- not in a good way. But I mean, you know, it's just, you're opening your mind to all of these negative thoughts that can come in. And if you, again, just focus on what you can do today and don't worry about what I should have done or could have done or would have done because the fact is, is you didn't and those chances are over. So just deal with reality. Mm, That is amazing advice. I absolutely love it. Um, And uh, I I totally agree because one, one of my good friends, he's, he's also a mentor. His name is Gene McNaughton. He's fantastic. He's, he's worked with everybody from Tony Robbins to Chet Holmes to John Asraf. Um, wow. he's, he's, he's world class. And he says that a lot of people say, I should do this. I shouldn't do this, et cetera, et cetera. And they actually don't deal with what's in front of them. So they end up shooting all over themselves. Right. Right. Yeah. You know, there's a big difference in stress. Let's say you have a, you're assigned a project at work. Okay. So there's a big difference between saying, Oh, I should do this project today, or I want to do this project today. And you can see if you just say those two sentences to yourself, I should do this, or I want to do this. And when you say I want, then it becomes positive. Mm. As opposed to I should do this, I should feels heavy. It feels like a burden. It feels negative. But when you say I want to do this, Right. Even if it's not something you want to do, you can convince, you know, just think, I want to do this. You will get to it and you'll you'll get over all of those negative sort of limiting beliefs that stand in your way. Absolutely. I I, I think that's uh, that's a really good point. And also the fact that usually when I am dealing with certain situations, certain problems, I actually don't think of them as problems in the first place. I usually try to reframe that and think of them as projects. Smart. Yeah. Very smart. Yeah. Because Very if you, again, that, that, that language pattern that you use, when you change that language pattern, your perspective changes. When your perspective changes off that issue or off that situation or off that problem, you are then able to more, take more informed decisions. Okay. Correct. Your, your wisdom kicks in, which has been switched off because you're too stressed out. You're too anxious. You're too depressed. That's right. That's right. You know, there's there's a very famous saying that goes, if you think you can or you can't, you're right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. You know, I mean, and that it just really sums it all up. I mean, you know, your mind is just so powerful and people don't appreciate how just the smallest little changes in thoughts can produce really significant results in your life. Mm-hmm. And a positive attitude, you know, a positive, the, you know, I look at my life and I, and I mean, I've still faced things that come to me that are difficult. And I say to myself, you know what? I made it through everything else. So, you know, whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger. <laughs> no, right. So I figure there's nothing that could happen to me that I will not be able to deal with. Because I've dealt with so much in my life and everybody can say the same thing. Everybody's dealt with their own hardships, big or small. And you have to imagine that if you got through all of that, there really isn't anything that you cannot get through. Absolutely. And Lori, wouldn't you agree that being a positive person or having a positive mindset or having a positive lookout on life, it's not actually a destination, which is the mistake that most people make. They think like, hey, I'm a positive person, but because of all these negative things happening around me that are happening to me, I'm a victim and it's not my fault that I'm now thinking negatively. But what they don't realize is that it's not a destination. It's something you work on every day single day yeah yeah it's you know they say it's not the destination it's the journey Mm. and so you know i mean i really want to get my book written um and i know that you know i've broken it down into pieces so i'll be able to get it done in pieces and sort of i'm not just sort of rushing through it because i want to get it done i'm working on it and focusing thoughtfully on it all the way but i only worry about one chapter at a time or one page at a time. I don't worry about, well, what am I going to write next? Because it always comes. Yes. And I thought that was, again, really powerful. You said, don't worry if you can't control it. Yeah. 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 And, you know, we often, I mean, one of the things that I do a lot of executive coaching on and that I, I actually have an online course is on procrastination. 
And procrastination really is something that overwhelms us. And um, so, you know, what I've taught people in this course is how to get past procrastination. It's called procrastination to profits because a lot of people get stuck and they are procrastinating because they don't have the skills, they don't know what they should be doing, um, you know, they've never done it before, it seems like it's a really big project, and there's so many different ways to tackle that. You know, you have to be able in life, you have to feel comfortable being uncomfortable. Mm. So you have to, you know, if you're not outside your comfort zone, you're not growing. Yeah. So you have to be comfortable feeling uncomfortable and putting yourselves into situations that will benefit you later that you may find scary now. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think you know? that is very true. And, and it's yeah. something that I think a lot of people struggle with because your comfort zone is something that is almost like a default setting, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, whoever you're with, you go always resort back to your default setting. And it's very, rare that somebody's able to consciously take control of their thought patterns of their behaviors and actually see where the boundary of their comfort zone is and step outside that that takes like we talked about before a lot of courage and a certain type of attitude um and i'm wondering glory if if you if you could actually um if you can tell us the, your definition of what courage really means courage is the ability to feel fear and act anyway. Mm, I love so, that. You know, on the other side of fear is success. And so for me, it's the ability that, you know, that you feel, you may feel afraid of something, but you don't let that fear control your behavior. You get past it and you act anyway. And you say, you know, it's like Nike slogan, just do it. And, you know, and sometimes that's really what it's all about is, you know, just do it. Just, just start, start anywhere. You don't have to start at the top. If you have a project or something or you're, you're facing um, a challenge, then just deal with the small parts of the challenge that you know how to deal with and don't worry about fixing the whole thing. I love that definition. That is so powerful. So Lori, let's dig deep there. Are there certain practices or uh, certain things that people can do to start to cultivate that courage because like we talked about it's not a destination you suddenly don't become courageous overnight you suddenly don't develop a certain attitude overnight but it's a journey so what what can people do to start cultivating that attitude and start cultivating that courage well, they can look for things in their lives, small daily things that they would normally be afraid of and then go ahead and do it. So, for example, my son used to be extremely shy and we'd go and we'd order at McDonald's and, you know, they would forget something and like he wouldn't speak up. And I'd say to him, you know, Evan, you have to speak up. And then um, one day where so we're sitting at the table and I said to him, well, you need to get some napkins. And I made him go to the counter to ask the girl for napkins and it scared the crap out of him because he didn't speak to strangers but he did it and so that's an example of a really small thing that takes you out of your comfort zone that you can do on a daily basis you know if you're let's say you're you're not used to exercising and you so in order you know you have to if you're a couch potato that's a real comfort zone you need to get past that to exercise so you can say to yourself you're not going to say, I'm going to exercise five times this week. You just say to yourself, I'm going to exercise for 10 minutes today. Just 10 minutes. Even if that's getting outside and walking around the block, doesn't matter. It's more than you did yesterday. And every day you can build on that. So, you know, you may need to stay at doing something for, you know, exercise at 10 minutes for two or three weeks. And then you go up to 15 minutes. But it's all in these small incremental steps. So it's all in about getting out of your comfort zone, even in the smallest way possible, because that gives you courage. And every time you get out of your comfort zone, you feel proud of yourself. And that feeling you know, you want to manifest that feeling again. So you become more and more comfortable being uncomfortable. If that yeah. makes any sense. Oh, absolutely. And I think there's a lot of people who actually do want to get out of their comfort zone. They do realize the steps they need to take. They do know, for example, they need to eat healthy. They need to exercise. They need to 
you know, get out of their comfort zone and start to speak to strangers, whatever it is, they do know what steps they need to take, but they're too scared to do them or they do them and then they fall off that wagon. Right. So it's, it's the same thing. Like people set their new year resolutions and, uh, you know, by February, like everybody's like right, right back to where they started back to square one. So right. but that's I mean, because they set resolutions that are too big and too broad. You can't set a resolution that says, well, I'm going to get healthy this year. I mean, what does that mean exactly? OK, well, I'm going to ex I'm going to start exercising. Okay, but what does that mean exactly? You know, there's, you know, if you say to yourself, I'm just going to start with 10 minutes a day. That's it. There's nothing that you hate doing so much that you cannot do it for 10 minutes. And most of the time after the 10 minutes, you're still feeling motivated and so you'll go 15 minutes or 20 minutes. But as you, you know, you start to build up over time, you build up this sort of data bank, this personal bank or inventory of feeling accomplished and feeling successful. And that, and success breeds success. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So what I'm hearing you say there, Lori, is that you take small steps, small steps that are actually well-planned, small steps that are hyper clear on exactly what you need to do to start walking down the path of reaching your final destination. And as you start to walk down the path, you can then build, you can, you can almost gain momentum. That's exactly the word. Right. So essentially you start off going so slowly that it's barely noticeable, but over time, if you stick with it, you will gain so much momentum that it's going to be hard to stop. Like even yeah. if you want to stop, you can't stop. No, but you won't want to. Mm. You won't want to because you'll have bred success. And once you start breeding success, you know, success in itself is very motivating and it motivates you to achieve higher levels of success. You know, when I coach people, you know, one of the things that I do in my coaching practice is I work with people exactly that to define their why. You know, why are you on this earth? Why are you working? What are you doing it for? What does it mean to you? Because once you can define your why, then we can start working on the how. And so, you know, I work with people to help them set their goals and reach their goals and redefine their goals. And, and we do everything in baby steps. But at the end of the day, everybody accomplishes their goal, especially because when you work with someone, you have accountability. So, you know, I think that accountability, if you want to achieve a goal, um, an accountability partner is really important and it doesn't have to be a coach that you pay. Uh, it could be your friend and you're saying to your friend this week, you know, this is what I'm going to accomplish this week and I want you to hold me to it. And your friend calls you at the end of the week and says, well, did you do these things? Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but sometimes people like it to be a, an outside third party professional because it has more clout or it has more weight. It, in terms of the advice coming from them or the accountability factor is higher. I completely agree. And I think accountability is absolutely huge because with accountability, it's more than just the fact that you are keeping track of something with accountability. You almost go through a transformation where you grow as a person, where you start to essentially get a deeper insight into yourself. Mm -hmm. And I think that is the real, that's where the real transformation happens. It's not the fact that you have a calendar on your wall and you put a little tick on it every single day to say, Oh yeah, I've done my 10 minutes of walking around the block. It's more the fact that with accountability, that self reflection, that deep introspection that you go through, you almost go through an internal metamorphosis and you you grow as a person. And I think that's where the real value comes from. Yes. Don't you agree? Yes, I totally agree. That was very well put. Totally agree. Yeah. Um, and also, I mean, you have an online coaching business and, and you work with some very high level people. You help them with, you know, reaching peak performance with goal setting, with accountability, uh, with, with their, you know, business goals, etc. So, what what are some of the, the the common patterns you have observed there? What are the common pitfalls that people face? Or and or and on on the other end of the spectrum, what are some of the good practices or good routines that people have established for this for themselves to help them get past those those sort of hurdles that you come across when you're going down that path? 
Well, having a plan is really important. And then taking that plan and breaking the plan down into the smallest little, tiny little minute steps. So if, for example, let's say you need to create a website and you have no idea what to do. Well, the first thing you need to do is you need to research platforms. Um, or you need to call your friend who knows more about this than you do. Right. Um, and so you write everything down. Well, you know, call my friend, research platforms. You write everything down individual, write content. Um, you know, all of the things that need to be done in the creation of a website hire a graphic artist, hire a copywriter. So you mark everything down, and then we take one thing step by step by step. And, you know, breaking things down, and this is what I teach actually in this course on procrastination, is how to achieve your goals by breaking things down to the smallest common denominator. Because if you break things down into small little pieces, every time you accomplish a small little piece, you tick it off and you feel accomplished. So you want to do more work so that you can tick more off. And by the time you're done, you've ticked off all the little things. So the big thing takes care of itself. So I don't worry about the big thing. Worry about accomplishing all the small little things. Because if you accomplish all those small little things, then the big thing is just going to happen. It's just going to get done. Yeah. So, again, you're, you're talking about lining up your dominoes and you essentially create a chain, chain reaction where you knock Correct. off one domino. And if it's the right domino, it will knock off other dominoes and have that almost chain, chain effect or that ripple effect into other areas of your life. Correct. That's exactly what it is. So Lori, how, how can we actually find out what the right domino is? Because surely at one point in time, there's probably lots of things you need to work on. I know, look at myself right now. Um, you know, I know I, I need to be going to the gym and looking after my health. I also know I need to be working on building a business behind my YouTube show. I also know that I have to be looking after my family. I also know that, for example, my car needs a service. Like, so there's a whole bunch of stuff going on. How do you start to identify what is the right domino that we need to work on in order to create that chain effect in that, that kind of ripples and, and spills over to other areas of our life? Well, we actually work backwards. So you actually start with the end in mind. And you look at, well, what do I want to accomplish in the end? And then you work backwards to figure out what are all the things that I need to do to accomplish that. You can also, what I do with people is I separate their personal goals from their professional goals. So this way it makes it easier for them because I make them into two distinct things. So that they're, and so that they're not overlapping. Um, and so because they're two distinct things, they get, you know, they start accomplishing goals all over the place in their personal life and in their professional life at the same time. So it actually works very well and they motivate each other. So it's really about deciding what the big thing is and then finding out, okay, well, what's the smallest thing I could do to get started on this big project? What is the absolute smallest thing that, what's the action that I can take today? And as long as you're making and taking action every day, your goals will become accomplished and you will become accomplished and you'll be much more successful. Lori, have you read the one thing? No. You haven't read the one thing? No. Are, are you sure? Because everything you're saying, it looks like you, you've, you've actually read the book, you've memorized it and, and you're literally- Never read it. No, oh, these are all my own, this is my own personal <laughs> here. Oh my word, that is fantastic. I love that. Um, if you do get a chance to read the one thing, please do, please do read it. Um, yeah, I'm going to mark that down, the one thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, go and check that out because I love to read. So if anytime someone suggests a book to me, I'm out there. Awesome. Well, um, I'll tell you a little bit about the background of the book as well and for the audience as well. Um, I think it was, it was uh, Fortune or Inc or Forbes or one of these, you know, um, big sort of establishments. And they did uh, like a, almost like a 100 must read books list to become a billionaire. Okay. And this book in that list of 100 books had its own category by itself. Wow. In productivity. Wow. Oh, I have to read that for sure. Yeah. Oh yeah, uh, it's written by Gary Keller and Jay Papazan. Gary Keller is somebody who started a real estate business and uh, he started you know, at a really, really small level and then he grew it to the biggest real estate company in the world. Wow. 
and he talks about his system, his thought process and everything like that. And everything you've shared with us, um, including that Domino's example came from that book, by the way, did not come from this guy. This guy's not that clever. <laughs> all right. This guy's not that clever. Okay, You can take credit for it. I don't want <laughs> <laughs> so, but I, I, I'm sure Gary will mind, and I don't want Gary to kick my ass. All right, so I look up to him. <laughs> he's he's, uh, he's awesome. Um, but I, I would encourage you know uh, anybody to go and, and check out the book. Uh, it, it it is phenomenal. It really is. Um, and everything you talked about about starting small, um, about you know taking the getting clarity on your goals, about making sure that you are hyper clear on where you want to go about starting with your why like all those things are explained in the book but in a very systematic way okay and it's beautiful so um i was just wondering if you had read the book that's all because it, it just looked like you were just like literally reading off that book it was fantastic <laughs> well i'm gonna read it now that's for sure awesome um I, i'd love to connect with you afterwards and see what you thought of it by the way i think with pleasure yeah, it's one of my favorite books. I think it's one of like my my top three books I've ever read. So. Really? Oh, I can't wait. Okay, good. Because I'm a voracious reader, so I'm going to go out and read that. <laughs> awesome. Um, and Lori, in, in all of this, so we, we talked about, uh, you know, having a certain attitude, about having the courage, about how you can create those big through breakthroughs um, by starting really small about how you need to only deal with today's problem today and ignore everything else and not worry about what you can't control and all those uh, good stuff. Um, I'm wondering in all of this, how big a role does the mindset play in all of this? Oh, it plays the biggest role. It's mm -hmm. the biggest role. And I go back to that, you know, this quote, which I love, um, which if you think you can or you can't, you're right. You know, if you think you can do it, you can. If you think you can't do it, then you won't. And your attitude is 95% of the game is your mental attitude and is about thinking positively and about, you know, I always believe when bad things happen, I always believe that they're for a reason and there's something better for me. You know, this happened because there's something better for me, or I didn't get this job because there's a better job for me waiting. So, you know, your outlook and how you look at things is 100% of the battle. Yeah. Yeah. I guess your, your whole life is, uh, essentially you're, you're looking through it, you know, from a certain lens that you have developed over time through your own personal experiences. Um, and, and you have certain anchor points that you have in your experiences. So you have certain connections that you make. So for example, um, you know, a simple one could be when I say green, you might picture an apple. Well, that's the connection that you have made. Which is why right. sometimes when you're around certain people, when you hear certain sounds, when certain situations arise, you automat automatically go back to your default setting. You automatically relate it back to that connection you made, possibly at a very early age, and that's what you default back to. But I guess the real challenge is for, for everyone to be more conscious, be more aware of what it is that you are experiencing. What are those default connections? Once you become aware, then you can maybe start to take certain actions or find out more about what you can do to, to redirect, to yes. change that filter. Yep, absolutely. And that's a lot of the work you know, that I do in my coaching practices. I help people to, you know, to understand all these things <coughs> and for them to realize that a lot of the preconceptions that they have in their head, they really don't believe, you know, there have been instilled by their parents or by friends or by other people. And, you know, it really isn't your own mind that you're hearing. It's other people's voices talking in your head. And you have to learn to ignore those other people's voices because just because you're, you're hearing in your head doesn't mean it's your own voice. Mm. Right. We often hear, you know, what our parents used to say or what friends used to say. And, you know, if, if, you know, if you're always told that you're a horrible athlete, then you're never going to be good at sports because you're never going to really, you know, feel that you can put in the effort and that you'll be good at it. Mm. Man, seriously, Lori, I'm, I'm, getting, I'm getting goosebumps as you say this. Seriously, it just like I got chills running down my spine and said it. If you hear it in your head, it doesn't mean that it's your own voice. Right. I, oh, man. I mean, like I had never thought about it like that. 
ever. And, and it just so, it, it hit me. It really hit me. And for people in the audience right now, I'm going to ask you, what is the voice inside your head saying right now? And is it truly your voice? Think about that for a minute. Yeah, because there's a lot of beliefs, you know, like like people have really hang ups about money because they're taught to believe that, you know, um, rich people are greedy or rich people are mean or, you know, it's hard to make money. And the fact is, if you think well, rich people are just like me, they just have more fun so they can live a different life than I can live. They're not better than me. They're just living a different quality of life. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's when you're able to start putting these things into perspective and realizing that a lot of, you know, your habits and things that you do, you don't even realize that they were, you know, that that's the way your parents acted. And, you know, it's like you sit down somebody and you go, oh, my God, I become my mother, you know, and that's really what happens is it's, you know, you become and you act like the people around you and what you were brought up and what you've seen and what you've been conditioned. But that doesn't mean that those, those are all limiting beliefs. And it doesn't mean that those thoughts, those thoughts actually belong to you. So you shouldn't be listening to that little voice in your head unless that little voice is coming from your heart and not just from your head. So Lori, is there a way that we can, we can be sure that the voice is actually coming out from our heart and not just from our head? Yeah, you'll feel it. I mean, you can feel the difference when something comes, you know, really is internal. You can really feel that that's something you feel it in your heart, you feel it in your bones, you feel it in your gut, it's internalized and you say yes, this is me. But, you know, there's a lot of other things that, you know, that you hear these voices and you say, no, I don't want to behave like that. No, I don't really believe that. I don't believe that rich people are mean. I don't, you know, that's what was instilled in me by my family, because they were poor. But I don't, you know, and if you don't get rid of that negative belief, you're always going to be poor. But if you can get past it and say, well, rich people are just like me, they just, they have more money and they have more disposable income, but they're not any better people than I am, then becoming wealthy is not as scary. And a lot of people, believe it or not, are, have a fear of success and not just a fear of failure. Mm. Yeah. And, and for people in the audience, this, this is exactly why I love having conversations with top thought leaders and experts in the world. This is exactly why I love bringing them on the show and interviewing them. And this is exactly why I love exposing you guys to these thoughts and these ideas and these concepts, because there's real gold in there. If you're paying attention, if you're taking notes, which guess what I do every single time. Look, I've got a writing pad full of notes of everything what Lori's been talking to us about. If you have been taking notes, then this stuff is really transformative. It's really life changing. It really gets you thinking on what's actually happening. The, the true reality, the true nature of things. And just seriously, think about it. The last time you actually had a thought in your head, was it really your own thought? Was it really your own voice? Where did they actually come from? Have you ever thought of that? I've never thought of that. This is the first time I came across it, but I absolutely loved it. Thanks for sharing that, Lori. That was powerful. I, I loved it. My pleasure. Awesome. So Lori, talk to us a little bit more about your um, speaking business and your book. I'm really excited to hear about your book. I know you're a franchising expert. You help people more um, with, uh, with, with actually getting franchising business or so like how they can actually buy a franchise business, but also how people who already have thriving businesses, how they can start to franchise their business, uh, right. which is a really interesting topic, by the way. I've, I've, I've always wanted to learn more about it. Yeah, well, franchising, it's a, it's a business model. It's bit, you know, I do business development and, you know, marketing and operations support and all of that kind of stuff. Um, the businesses for the most part that I work with are small, medium businesses. So they're small, medium business owners. Um, and you know, a lot of times people, you know, realize that they've been working for somebody else all their life and they want to work for themselves. And the best way to work for yourself, if you've never owned a business is to buy a franchise. And so there's thousands of franchises out there. There's, you know, franchise agreements are all different. And so what I do is I work with people who are looking to buy a franchise and I help them to find what would be the right franchise for them. That's a good fit for them personally, professionally, not just financially. And I work with companies that have a business that want to grow their business 
So my other client, the other side of my clients is actually the company uh, who wants to franchise or who wants to grow their business. So I'm putting together a book that's really meant for both parties. And it's sort of like a franchising 101, like how to buy the right franchise for you and how to franchise your business. So that's what the book is. And my speaking career, I speak on franchising, but my speaking career is much more about um, my own personal story. It's more about motivation. Um, you know, how do you move yourself forward? How do you get past procrastination? How do you know what your goals are? Uh, how do you achieve them? So my coaching practice is, is much more of an executive and personal development practice. Awesome. Um, and Lori, where can, where can people go to find out more about you, more about your coaching practice and how can they reach out to you? Okay. Well, they can reach out to me via email, which is Lori at Lori .com. So I presume you'll have my name somewhere so people will know how to spell it. Um, my website is just plain Lori .com, So they can see that they can hook up with me. I'm on LinkedIn. Uh, I'm on Facebook. And they can go and take a course on a site called Skillshare. And it's Skillshare.com. And I have a course on procrastination. So they just need to search Lori Cartman, the teacher's name, and they can see and they can, they can take advantage of this course. Um, if somebody wants to take advantage of that they can, and they want to email me, I can send them a link so they can have two months free on Skillshare. So they can watch Skillshare has thousands and thousands of courses and they're all really easy they're between 20 and 60 minutes long uh, and they have really on everything you could think of from you know chef knife skills to knitting and video i learned how to do video editing and i learned how to do you know presentation and production and all that stuff through them so i have a course there that's on procrastination um, it's called procrastination to profits and it covers a lot of the things that we were discussing today so but, you know, the best way to reach me is simply email. It's Lori at Lori And I, you know, I'd be happy to work. And if somebody comes to me and they say that they, um, you know, they come from your show, then I offer them a lot of special benefits. Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you, Lori. Um, how, how can we help you right now? Oh, you've helped me just by allowing me to tell my story. I mean, you know, it helps me to share because I feel that, you know, if people are listening and if people only pick out one thing from everything that I've said and they only got one thing, that's okay because I know that people get something out of it. And, and that's what my public speaking career is. It's really, I don't do that much paid speaking. It's more because I feel that um, I have something to give back. Mm, yeah. And, and that's amazing. Um, to be honest with you, Laurie, I mean, the, your whole story is really powerful. And uh, especially, I, I have to commend you on the fact that you were able to find the courage to get out of that abusive relationship. Because I know there are a lot of people out there, I, I, I know of some of them even, um, who are in that abusive relationship, and but, but they can't find the courage. They can't find the courage to get out of it. So I think that's right. really powerful. Yeah, because there is a way, no matter what you want to do, there is a way. And if you want to get out of an abusive relationship, there's always a way. Mm, yeah. And it takes a lot of guts and courage, but it's worth it in the end. Let me tell you, it's worth it. Yeah, I, I, I'm sure it is. And I think for, for people out there, if you are in that sort of toxic relationship, or if you know of somebody who's in the toxic relationship, I will highly encourage you to share this conversation with them. And encourage the, uh, that person or if it's you, you know yourself then make sure that you reach out to Lori absolutely because you know I'm happy to help anybody so if anybody was listening and something resonated and they want to chat with me then you know it's my pleasure you know just email me we'll set up a time to call or time for a chat no problem fantastic well there you have it guys our conversation with Lori Kaufman. She is phenomenal. And I think some of the ideas she shared with us around courage, around attitude, around how you can start small to create big results. And what does it mean to, to be hyper clear? What, having a why? What, what does that all mean? How do you actually start your journey down that path to make sure that you can have your breakthroughs? Um, and, and especially some of the stuff she shared about, you know, only dealing with today's problem today and not worrying about what you don't have control over and that quota then i mean man that that was that was just worth a million bucks by itself okay if you have it in your head 
does it doesn't mean that it's your own voice i thought that was phenomenal so i would actually ask you guys what is it that you are hearing in your head what are your limiting beliefs what are you feeling stuck with where are your frustrations what through what lens are you seeing the world ask those questions because otherwise you will never be able to get out of that comfort zone that lori talked about because you don't know where the boundaries are if you don't know where the boundaries are how are you going to ever stretch them how are you going to ever walk up to the edge look at the unknown in the face and then take that step outside that's where courage is right that's how lori defined courage courage is knowing fear it's feeling fear it's having fear but doing it anyways yep yeah so with that guys make sure that you share this conversation with other people if you found any value in this that's the biggest compliment you can give to me and lori we come here to serve you guys we spend our time to to serve you guys and to share our stories and our insights with you so the biggest compliment you can give us is to just pay it forward also make sure you hit the subscribe button down below because that's how you can stay up to date with all the future episodes and all the future awesome conversations and you get entered into the channel competition um which basically means that at the start of each month the first of each month i announce a winner who gets free access to my new networking uh, strategies course these are the exact strategies that i have used to build relationships with top thought leaders and experts just like lori so if you want to know what those strategies are that i have used then make sure you hit the subscribe button and comment comment on any video that's that's all you need to do so with that guys thank you so much lori this was an absolute pleasure let's organize round two sometime soon absolutely thank you for having me it's a pleasure lori and guys as always hustle hard stay awesome and i'll catch you in the next one